some officials, but I continue to do what I believe. Well, thank you. Thank you. So we'll get more into that. Thank you, Yuri. And thanks for being on. And is there any const uh, constraint on your time? Do you need to get on off or how, how are you? You're good to listen in and be part of the conversation for a while? Yes, of course. And uh, I will gladly to respond to your questions. Great. Thank you. So Harvey, I know you I'm need not to talk. I actually, no, I, it, it's, it's here that they'll, they'll see. You see, you can see me. Please mute, 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 mute. Isn't this exciting? Yeah, uh, uh, mute, Jamie, Jane, Jane, mute. Um, yeah, Steve, can we uh, mute everybody that doesn't need to be talking at this point? We're, we're going to, th this is the Columbus Free Press, and I just want to make sure everybody understands that we're, we're doing our monthly salon, um, but it's a very critical time uh, for global politics, and, and we just wanted to bring folks together that were thinking in direction that is what we are, have a lot of concern about. You know, we have different, different opinions within our, our, our people's community. Um, and I, and, I, and I want to know that we're going into that kind of conversation tonight, um, what people think and what how how things happen. Uh, let's make sure we do this, you know, in, in, in the way our, we are. It, it's a, this is a salon. We, we're here to, to politically talk and socially talk and be in community because we're, in theory, coming on and showing up. We're about some kind of progressive community. I mean, so if if we do communicate, that's what I hope everybody's central focus will be. So um, thank you, everyone. My name is Mark Stansbury. I'm in Columbus, Ohio, and the, this person on my side is Yoshie uh, Furuhashi. She's my wife, and we're in Columbus, Ohio. So Columbus, uh, thanks everyone for coming together. We've been doing salons for I don't know how long. Where's, where's Suzanne, she, she can tell us she's our statistician and, and historian and everything else. Um, but now I think I'm in. Okay, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't see you. Your, your forehead we see, but that's about it. But you are in, so good. All right, so we're going to get going. We have a very great uh, conversation to uh, be holding of us. Um, Harvey needs to get on and off, so we're going to have Harvey Wasserman, who we all know is, you know, our executive director, edu edu educator, and uh, whatever else we want to put on, that's that name we want to put on him. We know Harvey very well. He's us. Um, so thank you for coming on, Harvey, and, and thanks for doing your time. You're doing this great uh, thing that Stevens help, helped with uh, for a while. If you want to speak about that as well, um, go for it, please. Are you uh, available at this time? Yeah, I know he was uh, on and off, so I didn't know. Um, Who are you looking for? That's uh, Harvey Wasserman. Hey, who is you? Yeah. So let's uh, go forward and uh, hey, Yuri, why don't you do your thing? Cause you're like, um, and Simona, is that okay? Oh, you want me to go first? No, Yuri, I was gonna go with Yuri. Okay, you... uh, uh, I am ready to uh, talk about situation in Ukraine. So if you allow me, then I will, of course. So that, why don't we do a little bit, like we'll, we'll go sort of boom, boom. Uh, do a very, very short thing. Hello. Hello. Oh, no, Harvey's on. Hello. Okay. All right, Harvey. You got well, me? Let's go back to real quick what we need to do, and then we'll uh, just think a little bit. But I was starting to get to it. Yes, Harvey. So you're on in a second. Um, okay. We'll okay, go ahead, Harvey. All right. Well, thank you all for, and I want to thank Suzanne and Bob for having done the salons all those years and uh, continuing uh, with the free press. Uh, your contributions have been absolutely magnificent, and you, Mark, is a great activist, and all the rest of you, thank you for all your great work, and thank you for having me on. So 
my primary focus on the Ukraine situation uh, has been the nuclear power plants. Uh, other people, I'm sure, will cover many other aspects far better than I could. But um, I've written quite a few pieces. There are a number of them on uh, the free press. Thank you, Pete, by the way, and Steve Caruso, Pete Johnson, for keeping the free press uh, alive and well. It's a really amazing an important resource. So um, uh, as many of you know, I've been involved with fighting nuclear power since uh, 19, the early 1970s. Ironically, I knew all about nuclear power to start with because when I was in ninth grade at uh, Roosevelt Junior High over on Studer Avenue, uh, I did a report on it from our friend the Adams. So when the nuclear industry came into our town in Massachusetts, where we had an organic farm, uh, I knew all about nuclear power, and we stopped them from building two nuclear plants. When the um, In 74, when we started the No Nukes movement, Richard Nixon said there'd be a 1,000 nuclear reactors in the U.S. by the year 2000, but because we organized and fought them in the year 2000, there were 104. There are now 93 in the U.S., and one is about to shut next month, but uh, that's way too many. There are 15 one five active nuclear re power reactors in Ukraine at four different locations, including one location, Zaporozhye, although I pro probably pronounced it, mispronounced it, where there are six. And to give you some idea, that is the biggest atomic reactor site in Europe. Uh, to give you an idea, there are 93 reactors in the U.S., but there are no sites in the U.S. with more than three. And there are only a few of them. So Zaporozhye is an incredibly dangerous situation. There are three other sites in Ukraine with a total of nine other reactors. Twelve of these reactors were built by the Soviets, and they opened before the Soviet Union disappeared. So uh, these 12 reactors are all 30 years old or more, which means they've accumulated tremendous quantities of residual radiation far more than was at Chernobyl. Chernobyl, at which blew up on April 26, 1986, was actually smaller than all of the reactors in, in Ukraine right now. Uh, they are all a second generation Soviet reactor at least. A couple others are newer, but the fact is that every one of them is a pre-deployed weapon of nuclear mass destruction. Uh, uh, Putin and the Russians do not have to launch any nuclear weapons to completely blanket Europe and much of the rest of the world in radiation. All they've got to do, I hate to say it, is to trip off a, an explosion at any one of the 15 reactors in Ukraine, which could happen very easily. Uh, the, the first thing the Russians did, actually, was they recaptured Chernobyl. Um, they did that because Chernobyl is a dead zone and they were able to march their army right through Chernobyl with no resistance because there are virtually no people there. Of course, they irradiated their entire army, but Putin doesn't seem to care about that. So we now have a situation where the Russians have taken over those six reactors at Zaporozhye and they can at any time they want to uh, blow up any one of them and create a Holocaust worth than anything we've ever seen on this planet. Chernobyl at the time was the worst radiation release in the history of the human race, then followed by Fukushima. To give you some idea, Fukushima has released more than 100 times more radioactive cesium than the bombs at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We are talking here in Ukraine without a nuclear attack of a radiation release that potentially that could wipe out the whole entire human race. If those 15 reactors blew up, which he could do in a heartbeat, with, that, with no major deployment of, of ordnance whatsoever, the cloud that would come from those reactors would indeed threaten the future existence of the entire human race. Certainly make all of Europe uninhabitable and much of Russia. I'll get that, and to put that in perspective, when, when Chernobyl blew up in 1986, the Soviets actually seeded the clouds above Ukraine and Belarus so that the rain would bring down the radiation and, and prevent most of it from coming into Russia and Moscow. 
That's how cynical that was. And he, I'm sure, uh, knew, knew very well, Putin, that that's what they did and that he would be planning on doing it again. The message here is very clear. All nuclear power plants are pre-deployed weapons of mass destruction. If we're to have a peace movement on this planet, we have to shut all the nuclear power plants. And the reality is that if the, the world had, if the human race had been smart enough and evolved enough to convert entirely to wind and solar, which we could do very easily, or at least comparatively easy, and get off what I call King Kong, which is coal, oil, nukes, and gas, we would not be having this war. This is an oil war. This is a gas war. This is a nuclear war in terms of nuclear power plants. There will be no reason whatsoever for this war to be, occur in any way, shape, or form if Ukraine and, and, the, so, and Russia and Belarus are getting all their electricity, all their power from wind and solar, which they can easily do. And finally, we're seeing movement in that direction from Germany, which uh, uh, has shut after Fukushima. Since Fukushima, they've shut 16 of their 19 reactors, only three left in Germany. Um, California, which is the, uh, Germany is the fourth largest economy in the world. California, the fifth largest, has two reactors left, which we're desperately trying to get shut. But the bo bottom line is that this is a, a war caused by energy. It's caused by oil, gas, uh, somewhat by coal, uh, though coal has thankfully started to disappear, really, and, and nuclear power. And the, the, the biggest fear that any of us should have about what's happening in Ukraine is the vulnerability of those 15 reactors. The problem we face is that uh, Ukraine gets 50 percent of its electricity from those nuclear plants. So we know nuclear want to argue that those reactors should shut, which would not entirely, by the way, disappear the threat. Even a shut reactor uh, such as Chernobyl, which has still has a hot radioactive core sitting there to the extent that they had to spend two billion dollars to put a canopy over it. But the reality is that even a dead nuclear plant can be a, a radioactive hazard. Nonetheless, um, uh, th those 15 atomic reactors symbolize the 400 that there are worldwide, and they make it clear to us as a peace movement and as an environmental movement that nuclear power is our ultimate enemy. And that, that uh, uh, those 15 reactors in Ukraine and the uh, 400 worldwide are the number one threat to the future of the human race and of human survival. And when you have a madman like Putin uh, with the power, uh, with the flick of his finger, to cause a radioactive cloud coming from those reactors uh, to destroy humankind, you know, that, that really sets our priorities straight. So I hope to God people who know more about the peace movement than I do can, can settle this down and solve this horrible problem. But the reality is it's vastly complicated by these nuclear plants. And it's the reason, one of the reasons why Solartopia, a green powered earth, is absolutely essential to the survival of the human race. If somehow we get through this, we got to shut those reactors as quickly as possible, shut them all worldwide. You know, we have Bill Gates talking about building a small reactor factory in Wyoming for a couple of billion dollars. If they took that couple of billion dollars and turned it into a factory to build windmills, we could get all the energy we need from the wind power in the Great Plains. And I'll conclude by saying this, the person, the, ironically, the person who first envisioned most clearly the uh, great potential of wind power was Abraham Lincoln. In, 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 eight, in the 1860s, he basically said that we could transform the earth by harnessing wind energy. And uh, that's where we've got to go. Uh, the core of the warfare that's happening between nations now has to do with energy, coal, oil, nukes, and gas. And if we can solve that, maybe we can tame the tiger and uh, make some more progress with the peace movement. Thank you all for what you do. Thank you, Mark, uh, Bob, Suzanne, everybody, uh, for keeping this going. And, and no nukes, everybody. All right, no nukes. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Harvey. Um, and be safe out on the road and wherever you're going. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm honored. Yeah. And and we're we're really uh, starting trying to understand this global connection we're talking about tonight, uh, and and our community has talked about for years. So you know Harvey's just an example, one of our 
one of our experts, you know, within the community on anti-nuclear. And so denuclearization has been one of the demands uh, of this war, is denuclearization of the region. You know, let's denuke this thing. I'm not opposed to that agenda. So <laughs> let's have a let's have a conversation about that. So, uh, now we're moving on to Yuri and and or Simone. So Simone, are you still okay, flexible, or I would like to. Okay, Yuri, are you able to go now? Uh, yes. Uh, before I start, in uh, just a remark. Uh, uh, indeed, uh, this situation with nuclear power plants in Ukraine are troubling. Uh, thanks for presentation uh, um, uh, and um, uh, um, also uh, 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 it is uh, important to mention that Russia uh, says the uh, uh, situation is under control in Chernobyl and in Rhodar and um, uh, say, uh, 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 say, for example, uh, that uh, they joined Chernobyl to Belarusian power grid uh, to um, uh, ensure uh, safety. Uh, uh, so, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, talking about any nuclear accidents, uh, um, uh, uh, we, we should be careful, first of all, because uh, uh, in Ukraine and in Russia, there are a lot of experts who work uh, to avoid it and uh, uh, to um, uh, um, uh, decrease uh, any risks. And, um, uh, of course, uh, uh, this situation with uh, nuclear plants can be easily uh, invoked uh, uh, by those who are uh, wishing escalation of uh, this crisis, involvement of NATO. You know, if there is uh, any nuclear risks, uh, then uh, probably we could forget about risk of nuclear war between great powers and enter it. Uh, for, for some hoax, uh, such thinking is uh, uh, unfortunately natural and uh, we should be critical about it. So uh, moving on to, mo to, to my presentation. Um, dear friends, thank you for supporting peace in the world. The place from which I am speaking is not peaceful now. It is Kyiv, capital of Ukraine. Uh, four times today, air raid warning uh, sirens uh, were hauled and uh, my home shaked at night from explosion somewhere outdoor. As you probably know, uh, 24th February, President of Russian Federation Vladimir Putin was started so-called special military operation in Ukraine, which was already condemned as aggression by the resolution of the General Assembly of United Nations. Armed forces of Russia with Russia-backed separatists took several cities, such as Kherson, Melitopol, uh, Energodar, Ivankiv, Berdyansk, Novakovka, several major cities such as Kyiv, Kharkiv, Mariupol, Sumy, and others are under siege and shelling. Russians claim that their bomb only military targets with high precision, uh, but Office of United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights reported yesterday uh, at um, United Nations Security Council uh, session at least uh, 1,546 civilian casualties, including uh, 564 killed. And this is uh, only internationally corroborated data. Ukrainian government informed there were at least uh, uh, 2,000 civilians killed, among them more than uh, 50 children and children deaths uh, are also corroborated by OSCHR. Uh, around 4.4 uh, uh, million people have been forcibly displaced, including uh, 2.5 million refugees uh, who uh, have fled to other countries and estimated 1.9 million people internally displaced. Count refugees are stranded every day in the western Ukrainian city Lviv, uh, hoping 
to get a seat on a train um, uh, for Poland. By, by the way, all Ukrainian males between the ages of 18 and 60 are forbidden from leaving the country and restricted in freedom of movement within the country. Uh, and you have, uh, you can find in internet several publications uh, about this blatant human rights violations, but uh, uh, you can also find the petition uh, condemning it and asking government to remove this um, uh, restriction of freedom of movement. This petition was already signed by uh, 21,000 people, but the government is not uh, uh, reacting. Uh, German TV reported about two men, Sasha and Nikita, who are young pacifists. Uh, they uh, don't want to fight and can't leave Ukraine. Uh, my German friend wrote me about uh, the brother of his fiance. Uh, uh, he is stuck in Ternopil, another Western Ukrainian city. Uh, after he was denied exit uh, from Ukraine uh, on, day, uh, on the second day of the war. Uh, he was uh, uh, in uh, 40 kilometers uh, uh, traffic jam uh, to the Polish border uh, when the exit ban for Ukrainian men was enacted and uh, he was threatened to be conscripted immediately uh, if he would not uh, have left the border point immediately. And by the way, uh, in the same way, uh, uh, even international students, uh, uh, citizens of other countries, uh, um, uh, also uh, our government tried to uh, recruit them forcibly. Uh, and uh, there is a lot of uh, reports uh, uh, of African media uh, and uh, uh, other international media about uh, uh, discrimination uh, of um, uh, uh, black, brown, people, uh, uh, um, other uh, minorities uh, um, in regard to uh, um, treatment of refugees, uh, in regard to um, enforcement of martial law and so on. And, and talking about this, uh, uh, um, uh, this young man, uh, which I mentioned, he is now suffering depression, trauma, uh, even psychosomatic skin disease, uh, expressed suicidal thoughts. He is 20 years old and still is a student. And it seems that our military are upholding this restriction of freedom of movement to extort bribes uh, in some from uh, $5,000 to $7,000. Uh, 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 there are a lot of evidence of this, and the uh, famous Ukrainian uh, political scientist uh, uh, Yuri Romanenko wrote a blog about this. I know a lawyer uh, trying to help her uh, uh, 59 years fathers who need ophthalmological operation abroad, uh, but the military deny uh, to allow him to leave the country. So uh, there are uh, uh, two and a half million refugees who have fled to other countries, most of them to Europe, most of them uh, uh, women and children, uh, also uh, uh, 109,000 um, uh, of refugees uh, uh, fled to Russia last days. Uh, uh, more people, of course, fled before, but these days uh, more than uh, 100,000. Uh, uh, Ukraine continues shelling of Donbass. Uh, United Nations corroborated 25 civilians killed uh, and uh, 100 116 injured uh, in non-government controlled, so basically pro-Russian separatist controlled areas uh, after Russian invasion uh, to Ukraine. I remind you that uh, uh, these numbers are added to victims of eight year long cri crisis started from uh, uh, 2014 uh, when violent power grabs uh, in Kiev by pro Western forces in Crimea and Donbass by Russian military and pro Russian forces uh, and start of armed conflict between United States backed government of Ukraine and Russia backed separatists, uh, which continue continued during eight years. Uh, despite in 2015, ceasefire was agreed in Minsk Accords. Uh, and this uh, eight year 
war uh, before Russian invasion uh, costed Ukraine uh, uh, 14 uh, thousands of civilian lives uh, internally displaced uh, before current crisis. Uh, 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 one and a half million people and turned into refugees near four million of people, including three million in Russia and uh, near one million in Europe. A part of this horrible number, sir, um, a lot of ruined housing. Uh, many people are partly or fully deprived of access to food, uh, medicaments, electricity, water supply, and internet. And I remind you, this is only one track of conflict, Russia versus Ukraine, which uh, seems uh, like um, uh, a clash uh, of archaic Ukrainian nationalism war machine and archaic Russian imperialism war machine. In fact, uh, it is a part Part of global East versus West conflict, uh, the great power struggle in which United States and Russia fight for control over Ukraine, influencing and mobilizing people in Ukraine uh, through their economic ties and right-wing populist clientele in Ukraine, uh, which were built uh, during many years. Uh, uh, I need uh, to, to conclude my presentation uh, uh, at least several minutes. Yeah, uh, thank you. We will let you conclude, but Simone, I, I've understood Simone has a time constraint. We need to bring her in a little bit, and then we'll let you con conclude with some other dialogue that we want to do about your situation. Is that okay? Uh, okay, please. Okay. Okay, where's Simone? Where's this? Simone? Steven, what's that? Huh? Okay, for my talk, I am trying to share my screen. Can you see my screen? Oh, yeah, please. Yes. Yeah, see it. Yeah, we see Shall it. Shall I start? Yes, yes. please. We okay. Want to know <laughs> I wasn't sure what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, you know, the, uh, I thought that um, I will talk more about the election itself, but now I um, realize that the focus is more on uh, peace movement. So I just kind of changed my uh, strategy. Well, we, 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 we would have been very happy that we could have talked about the elections, but yes, and uh, I will I will talk about election as we well. We don't want to talk about the elections. Okay, <laughs> so uh, the election is that um, March 9th. March 9th uh, South Korean voters very narrowly elected conservative party's candidate Yoon sung yeol as their new president, and uh, he defeated Liberal uh, Democratic Party's candidate Lee Jae Myung, uh, who is amazing uh, human rights attorney and have served in the, as a as a mayor and governor for uh, more than uh, two decades and uh, uh, of course you can see that um, I, I you know I supported Lee Zem Young and also I personally met Lee Zem Young and uh, so it's uh, it's uh, such a disappointment and uh, been very kind of sad and depressed um, so what is the um, what is the implication of the outcome of this election the conservative win and Especially when Yun Sung Yeol, who was, uh, you know, he 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 was a career um, a prosecutor, and in fact, he president the incumbent president Moon Jae-in appointed him to um, to do the most difficult job, that is, reforming the South Korea's most powerful entrenched interest groups, uh, prosecutors. So some of you may wonder what's about prosecutors, South Korean prosecutors, and uh, it's totally different from uh, prosecutors in any other country. It has the most wide-ranging power and authority. It can investigate and indict, indict. So let's suppose you know whoever they wanted to go after and uh, politically destroy, uh, you might have a South Korea as a prosecutors. And uh, um, so the Yoon Sung Yeol, the now our new president-elect. Uh, he opposed the President Moon's um, reforming uh, prosecutor system. And so he basically completely um, betrayed the President Moon and uh, ran against, uh, 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 against him. And, uh, and so he uh, narrowly defeated the Liberal uh, Party candidate, Lee Sang-young. 
there was a closest election in South Korea's presidential, um, pres the history of South Korea's presidential race, yes. less than 1%, to be exact, 0.7%, about 200,000 uh, votes. And my argument is that Yoon's victory, the conservative victory, will have a major, will be a major setback to uh, peace movement and democracy movement and inter-Korean relations, and also in the uh, security and, and peace in the broader region of Northeast Asia. And the, uh, the screen that you have is, um, you, I can show you, this is uh, if, you, if you kind of want to visualize what democracy movement looks like in, South Korea, in the South Korean context what peace movement looks like in, in the South Korean context. This is the, looking at the candlelight revolution, the amazing candlelight revolution, which led to the impeachment of uh, 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 former president Park Geun-hye in 2017, which took a pretty much of uh, the, for almost a year and a half, um, a third of us all South Korean participate. So this is sort of one of those, uh, uh, so it's, it's good, you know, lighting, everybody can light one candle for peace and democracy and justice. And uh, so this is the way we ended, uh, impeached the former, uh, the um, corrupt um, administration. And, and then now, and, and then we had uh, President Moon came to power, unfortunately, so we are, Basically, today is, I guess, uh, when uh, Yun Sang Yun inaugurated in May, uh, we are basically, it's the ending of this uh, very brief candlelight democracy. Now, so uh, what have uh, accomplished for the last four years? Now, of course, uh, if you look, with all the pundits that say, you know, it failed, President Moon's uh, peace initiative failed. Uh, you have heard about, of course, we are, you all know about the, the first inter-Korean, uh, the, the two inter-Korean summit, and also the first uh, summit between um, US, sitting US president and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Kim Jong now, uh, but I think that, uh, I think we should not, we shouldn't um, uh, forget that there have been in, in a tangible progress as yet democracy movement works, peace movement works. So what were those? Uh, so I'm going to go through some of those the, the images of peace, what peace movement looks like. And it's got, that's going to have a lot of Korean because obviously this was prepared for the, another um, a presentation for Korean and the Korean conference. Uh, so in, as you know, Korea has been divided for the, since um, 1945 and it's still uh, divided, obviously, it's a technique at war and uh, because US uh, uh, refused to sign a peace treaty. And this was, it's the Pyeongchang Winter Olympic. And um, uh, in, and and this was the one of the, the sort of beginning of uh, sort of most latest uh, uh, peace uh, inter-Korean rapprochement under President Moon's initiative. And uh, so we had the series of inter-Korean, uh, you know, uh, rapprochement leading to inter-Korean uh, summit. Um, there's this amazing, there's a, a president who went to North Korea and uh, he addressed to uh, more than, you know, uh, 150,000 North Koreans as a South Korean president. And this is where North Koreans were embracing him. Uh, there is uh, his meeting with the North Korean kids uh, and the peace movement at the time, 85.8% Korean supported a uh, president Moon. And it's America also, with regard to peace movement, as this was also an amazing, unprecedented sort of solidarity between peace movement in Korea and peace movement in the United States. And you can see that uh, uh, this overwhelming, overwhelming uh, support. Uh, there is, uh, you know, two leaders having this uh, uh, summit meeting, historic, this, you know, beautiful Mount um, going back to and uh, um, and somewhere imagine now we can once a unified Korea or a peaceful Korea we can you know you can take a train from Seoul go to Pyongyang go to Beijing and go all, all the way to Paris uh, so as you can see there's a lot of uh, um, so what I'm trying to show you is that what's the, what is the, the, the there's going to be a total I can see the contrast between uh, for the last uh, you know five years and now what's going to be with under conservative um, uh, uh, Yun Sung Yel administration, uh, and also with regard to those who in the, from our side, uh, you know, there's a, this new Korea Peace Movement brought the new group that is a movement led by women, uh, women cross DMZ, Korea Peace Now, 
and also some of those um, just ordinary Korean Americans um, who, who have mobilized, energized, and also a lot of young Korean Americans. And so, uh, so this was, so, so, it, so at this point, I would say that uh, um, um, this Korea peace movement is truly historic. And I would say it's one of the, I don't wanna uh, downgrade under, uh, under um, uh, not emphasize other peace movement that taking place in other parts of the world, but this Korean movement, I would say, it is as important as those peace movement that we had in the 1980s, where the Americans and Europeans, Germans, uh, uh, you know, there was a great sort of a uh, peace movement that emerged, which even led to the sort of European, um, you know, basically even uh, ending the Cold War. Now, so with that in mind, I want to uh, look at uh, about. Now we have this uh, new conservative administration. Um, and, and also because I'm not watching my time, if I'm going over, I just can, can just uh, uh, let me uh, uh, remind me to stop. Now, what's going to be his policy? Um, I have written a very short uh, a piece on about the elections so right before the election, and I published in Counterpunch. And, so I'm looking at some of the things that I wrote. Uh, Yoon's policy, this conservative uh, presence, electoral policy will be very hawkish because he's prioritizing almost exclusively the broadening of a South Korean military commitment to the United States. And uh, so he will pretty much kind of subordinate his Seoul's policy to Washington. In fact, he says that during the campaign, he said, why, you know, if something happened, emergency happened, uh, he's going to first go, uh, call the White House. So you can see that that is uh, uh, that pretty much sort of obsequious and subordinated to uh, Washington. Um, conservative Party in South Korea is a little bit different from other conservative uh, in, around the world. It's uh, based on very anti-communist, pro-America, uh, uh, supporting the more imperialist imperialism. And so I think that in that sense, we have to have, uh, that's the context of South Korean Conservative Party. And that there, if, if there is a peace, uh, if there is any sort of rapprochement, the Conservative Party will be pretty much lose their reason to exist. So that's why they are so holding on to that, um, this policy. Uh, you, during the campaign, he even called for preemptive strike against North Korea now, which uh, means that as North Korea has, you know, nuclear weapons between 50 to 60, 80, um, it means a nuclear war. So probably, I, I just hope that he just said it because to win the vote, conservative vote, but that, but still for a, a presidential candidate to threaten with preemptive strike is a pretty uh, um, outrageous. And, and throughout the, as the campaign uh, was almost about at the last stage of his campaign, he was a pretty much very McCarthy era sort of red baiting against the liberals. He called the Moon Jae-in as a communist, uh, it's gonna have a, a socialist government. And uh, he's also kind of very anti, uh, very harsh anti-China rhetoric. Uh, he even said that South Koreans don't like Chinese. Uh, uh, it's ordinary people might say it, but as a leader who is going to be president, who's going to be um, Blue House, it's pretty, um, it's, it's, it's a, uh, horrible. And else he also adopts a very harsh line of uh, uh, attack against anybody who is the proponents of engaging with, with North Korea. He, his policy with the denuclearization of North Korea is pretty much the one that America's neocon proposes, a CBID, which means completely verifiable, irreversible denuclearization, which means that, you know, North Korea should give up all the nuclear weapons be, uh, uh, and then we might uh, consider um, guaranteeing their um, survival, their security. So which is which the policy which has failed and will fail and will never gonna happen, but nevertheless, in terms of rhetoric, that's where, where he's coming. Uh, during the presidential debate, he even said that, that this was very um, controversial. He said he will even uh, support a U.S., South Korea, Japan military alliance. Now, what that means is that, um, you know, in the event of uh, an emergency, uh, Japanese troops can land on, on the Korean Peninsula, which will be very, uh, which, you know, con controversial and a lot of Koreans will be against it, obviously, because they have been colonized by the Japanese for 35 years, their brutal colonization. So 
and the and also Japan's rising the far right, uh, you know, the, the uh, rising militarism is a concern. Um, moreover, the, this Yun's hawkishness isn't go further than existing um, U.S. policies. For instance, he said he's going to um, he think of we need a more um, that that is a U.S. terminal high altitude air defense missile system, which we have we have a six right now in in Soju, and he said we need more against uh, uh, you know to defend against North Korea's uh, aggressive behavior. Now, as we all know, that that has nothing to do with uh, North Korea. It is about everything about China. So he said we want more. Even though United States, it's our official policy, there's you know, South Korea does not need any more fat. But he said, nevertheless, he said he wanted we need more. And then he also may said that he was like in November last year, he said he will he request redeployment, redeployment of US tactical nuclear weapons in South Korea, which as you know, US withdrew all the tactical nuclear weapons in 1989. So uh, that's U.S. policy. No, we don't need. But Yoon said he's going to request, and uh, he, and then he got uh, Biden administration criticized Yoon. So he labored. He said he changed his mind. So so in a nutshell, what we're looking at is uh, the forecast is pretty bleak. As uh, Yoon's administration, President uh, Yoon, will escalate conflict with North Korea, uh, escalate uh, conflict with China, and uh, um, he will he will definitely it will be it will be it would be a major setback on, on the peace, move, um, a peace movement, uh, both in the United States and the, uh, South, South Korea. And uh, I also am very worried that not only uh, he does that because he is a completely uh, con uh, stepping his, 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 his team with the all uh, major uh, political prosecutors. Um, we're very worried that there's he's just like a previous conservative administration. There's going to be back back um, uh, back uh, blacklisting of uh, those who disagree with the administration. And as you remember, in the under um, Park Geun-hye, Lee Myung-bak, Park Geun-hye, the conservative administrations, they you know ten thousand uh, Korean artists and journalists and those who agree, the scholars who are blacklisted. And there's also the surveillance of, uh, you know, through internet and those who are disagree with them. So, so it's going to be the major uh, uh, setback on the peace movement. But that being said, though, um, I think that the Koreans have resisted um, Japanese colonization uh, through a peaceful, peaceful uh, movement. Koreans have endured the Korean War. Uh, Koreans have overthrew their um, dictatorship many, many times, authoritarian leaders many times. And uh, so there is just, a, I think there's a history of resistance, resilience. Uh, I think the memories of, memories of uh, um, um, fighting back. And so I think that uh, um, it's gonna be hard, but I think if we have, um, if we have, uh, if we have, if you were mobilized and uh, continue our fight, I think there's a good chance that we'll get the, uh, we'll uh, have a successful peace movement and eventually uh, not only leading to um, um, the more stable and peaceful Korean Peninsula, and at, at the end, the, the eventually also we have a Northeast Asia that is uh, uh, nuclear free Northeast Asia and the, 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 and the Korean the Koreans once again gaining sort of their uh, unified nation, you know, for the first time, the, the first time uh, since 1945, and which will be, you know, which will be, um, which is something a dream that we can, uh, I think, I personally, that I can um, uh, hope to have. Anyway, so I will, uh, I had, I, I guess I have a lot of things to do, but uh, I will uh, maybe pause here and then address any question that you might have. No, thank. You. Thank you, Simone, for that. And Yuri, we'll get back to your presentation as well. But Simone, um, part of the themes that we were wanting, well, I want to develop and, and have been starting to think about are uh, three movement parts that we need to be part of. is denuclearization, you know, Ukraine, Korea, same, I mean, One's being told to do it, one did it, and 
where are we at? So it doesn't necessarily de-conflict the reality. So denuclearization is an issue. De-block thinking, you know, breaking down this old white man's thinking of where we're at at this point is, is I think, as a peace movement, we need to think about how to de-block ourselves, blockhead ourselves, you know. And then the real, real threat I think that we need to talk about is the right wing movement. You mentioned it a little bit, on Simone, it, it, the the impact of the m most recent elections. That's why I didn't really want to talk about that. But but anyways, we will talk maybe more about that. And you're a, yours, your Zelensky president, Mr. President. He he's a he's another one that we need to be learning more about. Um, in this whole conflict that's going on. Um, there will be peace at some point. There'll be some kind of negotiation. We're not understanding that uh, pr the president of Ukraine is adjusting his uh, approaches already, right? Correct? Um, and, and Simone, you're gonna be going into a sort of a new environment not knowing where that's all heading as well. Um, maybe not you personally, because you're in Washington, but, but um, you go back and forth, I'm sure. And, and much, many, we had a major loss, I believe, of someone, she, she died this this week. Um, Hyun uh, Lee or Hyun? Can you get, do you know her? or? Yeah, Hyun Hyun Lee is uh, actually I I obviously, obviously I I I worked with her personally and uh, Hyun Lee has been. Can uh, you share just a brief about her life, please? And her yes, Hyun Lee has uh, been a very. She's a, a Korean American and uh, um, she has been involved in the unification movement. She has. Uh, um, she has been, she's a great writer. She, for a long time, she was also a journalist and she's involved in, uh, um, uh, I think she also uh, uh, visited North Korea uh, several times. And so one of those Korean American who, who can, you know, fluent in both uh, fully bilingual, which is kind of a little bit still very rare. So, it, um, and, she, and her last, um, uh, work was working through a woman cross DMZ where uh, she was a national U.S. national um, organizer, and um, oh my God, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. but I, I did. I wanted to at least take a moment to really recognize the work that she had done, and the, and the loss that we have as an international movement. I just wanted to take that moment. Um, thank you. I'm sorry uh, for opening anything too fresh right now. Uh, so maybe can we transition? I, I, but I don't know what's best for you. I don't know. Um, I uh, I didn't hear you. So um, my interest in the Korean movement in mm -hmm. general, I I learned about student activism in 1980. I mean. That, mm -hmm when the, the massacres happened. And and I really understood the strength. And then I've met in 91, I, I was in the Philippines and met Korean uh, activists. And, and I know the seriousness <laughs> that is it, it, within that movement. Um, is there learning to be, lot, lot, to be taught by your history to the movement that's going on? The, I don't know, Yuri, how how that movement is, and that we our our media is talking how heroic the Ukraine Ukrainian resistance is, and how, but they're not doing it nonviolently. I'm not sure passively. Uh, the, the, there's a difference, and and I'm not trying to negate any kind of resistance that is there. And my my voice is not one that has much credence on anybody. P Putin's not got me on his speed dial. <laughs> so um, so uh, I, I heard two please. questions about uh, President Zelensky and about peace movement. I will start from the second. Uh, uh, peace movement uh, in Ukraine uh, is 
uh, uh, underdeveloped, uh, uh, and uh, it is because uh, um, uh, very low level of development of peace culture uh, on uh, uh, post-Soviet space, uh, in particular in Russia and in Ukraine. Uh, and uh, this difference uh, that in Russia we have uh, um, many anti-war demonstrations uh, 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 and uh, uh, in Ukraine uh, uh, all people are sitting in their homes or fleeing from the country uh, is uh, because um, um, in Ukraine we have martial law, in Russia not, and uh, first of all because uh, uh, during many years uh, um, Western governments and benefactors such as George Soros um, uh, supported um, uh, civil society uh, in Russia. Uh, 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 putting a lot of um, resources to Russian non-violent movements and putting a lot of resources uh, into Ukrainian pro-military movement. Mm, uh, while in Russia, um, uh, Western benefactors uh, preferred um, uh, um, non-violent um, human rights defenders, nonviolent activists uh, in, in Ukraine. Uh, the most of uh, funding received um, uh, organizations uh, of um, uh, um, in, in many times linked with the military or with uh, uh, the intelligence. Uh, and uh, uh, because of that, for example, uh, some structures uh, received uh, grants for peace building and um, uh, for nonviolence and use it uh, uh, for uh, uh, far right populist community building, capacity building. Uh, and uh, we had even uh, um, uh, the hate campaign against Russia culture, uh, so called Vitsich movement, uh, 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 self. Uh, uh, proclaimed uh, non-violent resistance movement, non-violent resistance movement to Russian national, to, 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 to Russian uh, imperialism. Uh, uh, they uh, uh, had a lot of hubris, but um, what they uh, do, uh, they just shamed people uh, who used the Russian language publicly. And uh, they lobbied the uh, adoption of laws excluding Russian language language from public sphere. Uh, and, and this was a part of so-called uh, nonviolent movement in Ukraine uh, during some time. Uh, 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 genuine pacifists are rare in Ukraine. Uh, uh, most of uh, people uh, uh, who um, protested uh, against the war uh, when it was uh, um, uh, uh, allowed uh, uh, by the law, uh, uh, they was uh, uh, not uh, neutral uh, anti-war activists, but Russian sympathizers. Uh, and uh, uh, in, in Ukraine, uh, uh, if you are for peace, uh, you can be easily dismissed as a uh, uh, traitor, Russian sympathizer, and so on. And of course, uh, uh, there is this uh, uh, propaganda of war effort, uh, shaming of those who are refusing to uh, participate in war effort, shaming of all men who are uh, not coming to army, uh, and this shaming of men for evasion of military service uh, is uh, a Soviet tradition, uh, easily adopted by far-right um, uh, nationalists uh, and uh, uh, all uh, uh, populist patriots uh, uh, which uh, hijacked public space in Ukraine. Um, uh, talk Talking about uh, uh, Washington and President Zelensky, you know, we, uh, uh, I think uh, we, we lack Washington at the negotiation table. Uh, 
uh, uh, now. Uh, and um, uh, because of that, uh, and because of uh, uh, um, great military aid uh, to this militarist regime of Zelensky, uh, uh, and um, uh, because of uh, uh, absence of any critic from the West um, uh, of uh, uh, previous years of non-compliance uh, compliance with Minsk agreements, uh, which was uh, a peaceful solution, uh, but uh, it was not implemented because uh, uh, Ukraine uh, uh, didn't uh, uh, take uh, uh, political measures uh, uh, which was prescribed in misagreements. Mm, uh, and um, uh, uh, this uh, uh, was uh, uh, mainly because uh, uh, Minsk agreements uh, were interpret uh, interpreted by uh, Ukraine and by the West uh, as just a ceasefire uh, and political solutions uh, uh, were uh, inter uh, interpreted uh, uh, not literally, uh, but as uh, uh, Western uh, uh, policymakers uh, wished. Uh, to, to, to explain why we need uh, the West at the negotiation table, and uh, I think uh, uh, it should be direct negotiations between uh, uh, Putin, Biden, and Zelensky. Uh, I, I just uh, uh, like to finish my presentation because what I uh, started to say uh, is uh, that uh, Russia versus Ukraine, it is uh, 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 current uh, one track of this conflict. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, there is uh, uh, a second and uh, uh, more pertinent uh, uh, track, uh, uh, West versus East. Uh, uh, it it have a long history. It killed many people uh, on all continents, uh, not only in Ukraine. Uh, Afghanistan, Middle East, Balkans. Uh, this long history of West versus East conflict includes colonialism, imperialism, world wars, cold war, liberal Germany, insurgents of autocracies. This conflict is a result of uh, the decision uh, of United States. Uh, uh, it is created after uh, uh, um, uh, the Second World War uh, when the United States decided uh, to uh, create world government not based on nonviolent uh, weak but relatively democratic, democratic world federation, United Nations. United Nations was designed to be the world government uh, uh, based on nonviolent technologies. Instead of that, the United States created military alliance of Western democracies, NATO, uh, to, to pursue uh, um, uh, violent military-based global governance. And uh, uh, now uh, Russia and China, uh, as uh, wannabe superpowers, just start copying misbehavior of United States. Uh, they they are uh, uh, also creating military alliance for global governance. Um, uh, and uh, uh, this uh, 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 part of this long story, uh, most relevant to Ukraine, is uh, um, NATO expansion to the east of, after the end of Cold War and promise of Ukrainian membership. Now, Putin went to Ukraine when Ukraine failed to comply with Minsk agreements, which arranged autonomous Donbass as guarantee of partnership uh, between Ukraine and Russia. And the West refused to guarantee non-expansion of NATO. On the contrary, in uh, uh, 2021, NATO intensified military operations in Europe, including drills with nuclear weapons, uh, proclaimed uh, Russia the enemy, and provided enormous military aid to Ukraine. Also, in this declaration of NATO summit, uh, they shamefully um, uh, 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 criticized uh, um, treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons. Uh, I, I think it is hope for humankind uh, and all great powers should instead join the treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons. So during this eight years uh, of bloodshed, which I talked a lot about uh, uh, previously, fighters on the both sides uh, in Donbass continued to kill each other and civilians. By the way, you mentioned far writers. Uh, you should understand uh, that far-righters are on both sides. Uh, 
uh, uh, uh, talking about conflict between Ukrainian government uh, uh, and uh, uh, pro-Russian separatists. Uh, on the side of government, uh, far writers uh, uh, Azov uh, and uh, right sector, правый сектор. Uh, on uh, the side of Russia, far writers are Russian national unity uh, and Varyak battalion, uh, to give examples. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, so many talks about fascism uh, just is about uh, uh, archaic political culture and uh, a great role of commemoration and even over commemoration uh, of uh, uh, Second World War, uh, or as uh, it uh, was in Soviet culture, the Great Patriotic War. That's why so many uh, talks about fascism. All these eight years, uh, uh, fighters on the both sides and bon Donbass continued to kill each other and civilians. So Putin decided to recognize independence of Donetsk and Luhansk People Republics and started this special military operation, allegedly for collective self-defense uh, with separatist republics aimed at uh, so-called demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine. What does it mean? Demilitarization means non-alignment uh, of Ukraine uh, and no military threat to Russia and allies. Uh, so nuclear, uh, no nuclear weapons. Ukraine should recognize that uh, Crimea belongs to Russia and Donbass separatists are independent states. Uh, and uh, it is, uh, um, of course, uh, not acceptable for current Ukrainian regime. Uh, Denazification is a thing related to archaic politics. Uh, Russian, uh, Russians call Ukrainians fascists. Ukrainians call Russians fascists. Uh, uh, because uh, uh, all compare uh, uh, current polity uh, uh, in some uh, uh, exaggerating uh, some uh, uh, elements of um, uh, um, uh, extreme nationalism uh, in, in um, uh, uh, political life. Uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, uh, this uh, uh, exaggeration uh, uh, creates this discourse of uh, Nazism, neo-Nazism, uh, and so on. Uh, um, Russians and Ukrainians are calling each other fascists because of memory of World War II. Uh, it alleges, uh, uh, this, this uh, denazification alleges that government of Ukraine is under control of neo-Nazi, and it means removal of allegedly Nazi. Basically, enemies of Russia. Uh, Putin means that. No enemies of Russia should be in Ukrainian government. Uh, um, uh, the, uh, uh, enemies of Russia should be removed from the power, uh, and uh, uh, government should should be Russian friendly established uh, or uh, uh, policies of current government should be changed. Uh, like, for example, ling linguistic policies, excluding Russian language uh, from public sphere. And also Putin said uh, uh, that he expects um, punishment of um, uh, uh, neo-Nazi uh, far writers um, um, involved uh, into uh, um, violation of rights of uh, Russian-speaking people and so on. Uh, uh, in some aspect, uh, it, it may be legitimate concern, at, and uh, I think it is negotiable, uh, but uh, uh, given uh, that uh, uh, far writers, uh, 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 despite explicit far writers, uh, are uh, not mainstream politicians, mainstream politicians uh, are under influence of far writers. It is also true. Um, negotiations between, uh, and in Russia it is true too, uh, because this archaic uh, nation building in Ukraine and in Russia, uh, it, uh, it includes, uh, uh, includes uh, uh, this culture of violence uh, uh, at the core uh, of uh, uh, nation building. Uh, negotiations between Russia and Ukraine are stalled. Uh, both sides don't trust each other and failed even to agree on humanitarian corridors, uh, not uh, to say ceasefire. Uh, position of Ukraine on peace talks uh, um, uh, is uh, Russian forces should leave Ukraine, including Donbas and Crimea. And position of Russia includes, as I said, giving up Donbas and Crimea. Uh, so no side is really... Uh, 
uh, ready to stop shooting while negotiating. So basically, both sides are not negotiating in good faith. Zelensky said uh, Ukraine may give up aspirations of NATO membership, uh, uh, as Russia demands. Uh, uh, but uh, 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 but Russia don't uh, trust it. Yeah. Just t- hang on. Let's get into that, because I think that's a new transition that's going on. But I do want um, us, because we start losing people now, um, to, to know that we're starting to move into the conversation phase, okay? Not a presentation, more just people talking people and getting it and, and may have questions of where you're at and what's going on and that whole thing. So let, let's get let's get a little into that as well. But I do want folks to know April's Free Press uh, Salon will be, uh, it's April, right? So we're going to do Earth Day. And we're actually doing a birthday for the, the WGRN, uh, our radio station. And um, it, it, uh, I saw Tim getting on. Do you want to give details on that, Mr. Programmer? He'll get on soon, I'm sure, unless he's sleeping in front uh, of no, I'm awake. Okay. <laughs> I can't figure out how to do this thing here. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, we're going to be having a, a Earth Day birthday party for the WGRN, which is on 94.1 FM, and uh, everyone's invited to uh, participate in it. We are not sure it's to be announced when we're going to be having that uh, that venue. Uh, we might do it uh, virtually, and we might also do it at a at a location. So um, we we'll just you're all invited. We're giving you a heads up for a month ahead, and uh, it's going to happen on Earth Day. So it's I think it is our, you know, I really don't know, maybe fifth anniversary, something like that. So uh, we've been on the air uh, terrestrially for uh, five years for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and and WGRN, WCRS are two of our great, great developments as 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 the Columbus Institute for Contemporary Journalism or Free Press, as we all commonly know it, um, has been around since 1970 and uh, is coming up on its own birthdays and other things. Um, but we're very happy to have this conversation. Uh, Our salon is a monthly uh, reality where we come together and talk. We usually have done this before the uh, virus that hit the globe. I don't know. Yeah, we had a studio uh, that we could work out of, which uh, was supplied by uh, Suzanne Patzer and uh, Bob Petrakis. Right. But uh, when the virus hit, you know, of course we had to isolate ourselves. But it worked out well. You know, a lot of our producers just started producing from their homes and uh, have uh, continued putting on their shows. And what I would like to invite every single person that's on this salon tonight is if you would like to have an interview, if you have some type of subject that you want to talk about, uh, contact us at, at uh, info at wgrn.org and um, uh, we can arrange with you uh, one of the producers to actually uh, put w- w- what 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 you would like to talk about. I mean, every single subject that we've hit on this, the Saturday Salon has been extremely important, and it's truth, and that's the best part of it is that there's no hype to it, and uh, we want to uh, put this uh, message out on the radio waves as uh, we have. You know, there's like... A, uh, I, I think I've heard uh, Tom Hartman talk about 1,400 uh, radio stations that, uh, you know, put out the, the, the right-wing uh, propaganda. And, uh, you know, there's very few community radio stations that, uh, that do across the country in comparison. But we need to put our message out there. So when people jump into their cars and they turn onto a radio station, they can actually go into something and actually receive some information because that's exactly the way they're receiving it. But uh, they're being hyped and uh, we, we, we promote truth. So that's uh, the whole purpose of the radio station that uh, has been developed for the, uh, uh, through the 
of Columbus Institute of Contemporary Journalism and um, also the uh, Central Ohio uh, uh, Green Education Fund. That's where the radio stations come from. And WCRS is a lot older than us too. I mean, they've been up there for a long time on the, on the radio waves and, you know, they sustain themselves, you know, and the, there's going to be transition transition later on, but, uh, you know, we can endure it. So uh, we want to keep our radio stations going so we can uh, uh, put the message out there for people. I remember Ruben uh, Castilla Herrera talking about um, that, uh, you know, the, the, the power of the vote and uh, talking about constituents that believed in, you know, uh, immigration reform and uh, just treating people like human beings. And he said that, uh, you know, we could possibly turn 5,000 votes. You know, 5,000 votes can turn an election. So, uh, you know, that's what we have to work towards in order to get our agenda or our, what we, what we want to do as far as our community, our community agenda, basically. So, yeah, listen to 94.1 and listen to WCRS uh, 98.1, I believe. 98.3, excuse me. 98.3. 98.3 and 94.1. Put it on your radio, Dad. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. And you can get it by web, too. Um, yeah, you can get it by web, wcrsfm.org uh, and uh, wgrn.org. Yeah, definitely. You can stream us. 24. And, you know, I've been looking at the, the analytics uh, on the radio station. Uh, we do have some people that listen to us in Russia. So, I mean, you know, we, we're out there, you know, and we really need to continue putting ourselves out there, you know, one way or another. So you guys instigated this invasion? Is that what I <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I'm teasing. I'm, I'm no, I never invade anybody. I know. I know. <laughs> so um, the other issue that we're coming up on, and I hope uh, um, Free Press will be part of, and somehow, some way, we haven't figured it out yet, is the uh, Confest, the end of June. So uh, I'm sure there'll be some more discussion about that as we're coming up. So I just wanted to give some quick uh, announcements coming up as, before we start losing people, because um, usually we're done 8 to 8.30, and we're getting later and later as we're starting to get a little bit more bold about maybe, maybe wanting to meet in joint together. Um, but we're still, at this point, I think, through till 2023, going to do this um, Zoom. Uh, from, so Yuri, um, please continue your discussion, but also characterize it with what you're hearing from us, because we, you know, we we we're not we're not we know. Say we need to know sort of what's the most uh, pressing international accomplishment that we could do what outcome can we help push forward what um i know end of war i mean that's one thing i'm really pushing is in the damn war i mean but after that it, uh ukraine still was not that good before <laughs> um some well, people say you know, some people say Ukraine doesn't even exist without Russia. I mean, you know, there, there's you know, there's whole kinds of. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, um, uh, uh, talking about uh, what should be done for peace in Ukraine, uh, it is uh, first of all uh, uh, to uh, learn truth and to say truth, uh, uh, because. Uh, uh, truth unites people. Uh, it is on non-contradictory, uh, and uh, all lies uh, are uh, designed uh, to divide and rule people. Uh, and uh, uh, in uh, in war, uh, war can't exist without lying every day, every minute. You know. Uh, and uh, uh, um, uh, the great lie of every war uh, is here is good guys, here is bad guys. We are good guys, 
angels, they are bad guys, demons. Uh, uh, instead of that, uh, 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 we should understand uh, that there is no good guys and bad guys. There is good behavior and bad behavior. Good behavior is negotiating instead of talking. Uh, good behavior is not violating human rights. Uh, good behavior is uh, uh, not uh, creating uh, uh, some sort of uh, uh, 20th century shaped uh, um, arm to the teeth uh, nation state, uh, but think about future, uh, about better world without armies and borders, uh, world uh, uh, built uh, uh, on the basis of ideas of social and environmental justice. Uh, and of course, world without nukes, we should get the get rid of nukes yeah mm -hmm. uh, uh, so uh, first uh, the thing is truth uh, uh, and I will uh, uh, explain it uh, uh, more a uh, uh, moment later when I uh, uh, explain two other things uh, what should be done uh, two other things is uh, to help the needy uh, uh, to, to help uh, the work uh, of uh, humanitarian um, agencies, charities, uh, small charities, uh, uh, and uh, 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 credible international charities, which are not helping the military, but helping civilian. And uh, uh, it is a rare thing, because in Ukraine, uh, so many charities uh, uh, are uh, uh, pro-military, pro-governmental. If, if you give uh, some uh, uh, money, uh, they will uh, buy weapons for the military. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, before helping any charity, uh, you should check whether it gives money to the military, uh, whether uh, it uh, um, buys weapons. And uh, don't uh, give the money to uh, merchants of death. Uh, um, uh, help uh, people who need it uh, uh, only. Uh, and um, uh, uh, third thing uh, is, um, uh, 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 as I said, uh, it is common problem uh, in post-Soviet space under developed of peace culture. Uh, and uh, we will have no genuine independent uh, um, peace movement uh, in Ukraine and in Russia able to uh, um, have political impact uh, uh, to, to say a uh, loud word uh, and participate in decision making. Uh, we will have no such a movement if uh, we will not build a genuine peace culture. So uh, 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 peace education for citizenship is needed. Uh, expertise, translations of great books. Uh, 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 we have some old books such as Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, there is works of Leo Tolstoy. Uh, but um, uh, these works are better known on the West than uh, uh, in post-Soviet space. Uh, uh, educational uh, programs uh, aimed uh, to um, uh, uh, to help people to become uh, free and responsible creative citizens instead of this old paradigm uh, of uh, uh, military patriotic upbringing. Uh, Mm, uh, uh, which uh, makes people rather obedient, uh, non-asking uh, soldiers, conscripts, uh, instead of uh, responsible citizenship. Uh, 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 so it is three main things which should be done for uh, 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 peace in Ukraine uh, and uh, 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 in our uh, region, in Russia too. It is telling the truth. Uh, it is uh, helping the needy and it is investing a lot in uh, uh, peace culture. Uh, 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 now, um, uh, several words about negotiations between, of course, uh, 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 in uh, Russia, uh, uh, current political class uh, is uh, uh, very warmongering uh, and uh, Ukraine, it is even more warmongering because, you know, we have a just war. Uh, everyone should join it. Uh, 
uh, all world should join it. Uh, close our sky. Uh, NATO, uh, help us to fight Russia. Uh, and don't fear uh, uh, Third World War, uh, because as I said, uh, the Ukrainian uh, um, politicians, uh, 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 Third World War uh, already started. Uh, and it is only a question of time when we will uh, have nuclear apocalypse. It is insanity, uh, but uh, warmongers are eager uh, to escalate conflict, uh, to, to uh, uh, involve uh, into this conflict more and more uh, 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 Western countries and uh, uh, um, uh, merchants of death, war profiteers uh, are, are having their profits. Uh, Lockheed Martin, Rateon and others uh, look at their stocks. Their stocks at stock markets are rising because of escalation and they, they need more money. They didn't care about risks of nuclear war. Uh, they, they think uh, uh, they will have their profit and uh, uh, any risks uh, will disappear somehow. They, they think that some sort of uh, invisible uh, um, hand of market will give them money uh, from killing uh, and then will uh, save them from nuclear apocalypse. How, how they uh, uh, have such thoughts, I can't imagine, but they have such, uh, uh, such thoughts and they, uh, they uh, um, push the world on, on the brink of fatal escalation. Uh, uh, that's why uh, uh, we need uh, negotiations on the both tracks of this conflict, uh, uh, not just uh, Russia and Ukraine, uh, but United States, uh, Ukraine and Russia. Because uh, uh, without uh, uh, military and propagandist aid from the West, our President Zelensky, uh, our political class uh, will, would not dare uh, to uh, be so uh, non-negotiable. Uh, and Putin also would not dare to be so aggressive. Putin so aggressive because he fights not only Ukraine, he fights the West, which took Ukraine under control. Uh, and uh, that's why uh, we should uh, bring at the negotiation table all sides of this war, Biden, Putin and Zelensky. And uh, first, uh, they, uh, uh, they should uh, uh, um, uh, agree on ceasefire. Uh, 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 overcome distrust, overcome uh, these ambitions, and just uh, uh, agree that we will not kill each other, uh, we will uh, seek peaceful solution. Uh, and when this fire will be agreed, uh, we can start uh, a comprehensive peace process. Uh, uh, all uh, this uh, uh, hardly um, um, uh, hardly uh, um, co uh, hardly cooperative demands of uh, all sides in this process, these contradictory ambitions, uh, uh, these contradictory security concerns uh, should be uh, uh, put down on the paper and then discussed thoroughly uh, uh, point by point. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, also uh, uh, to help uh, these negotiations between leaders, uh, uh, global civil society uh, can uh, create a commission uh, of experts on peaceful solution of Ukrainian crisis. Uh, experts like uh, lawyers, uh, like uh, uh, peace scholars, uh, like peace journalists uh, who uh, can uh, uh, help leaders and push leaders uh, to seeking peaceful solution instead of profiting politically and economically uh, from escalation. For, uh, for the gain of a small circle of war profiteers and uh, for uh, horrible losses of uh, the people of Earth entirely. Uh, 
uh, instead of that, uh, uh, we need negotiations. And of course, we need bear in mind uh, that uh, uh, ideally, uh, uh, this conflict between uh, East and West should be finished uh, by development of nonviolent global governance. Uh, 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 the planet without atomic bombs, without armies, and without borders. Uh, the planet uh, in which peace culture uh, will overcome archaic and dangerous cultural violence. Does anybody have any questions for Yuri? Anybody have any questions? No, thank, thank you, Yuri. That was, that was some good stuff. And um, we do, yeah, if anybody questions, please. I want to, I'm taking off my thingy thing here. Um, I've seen some good reminders that we do have local uh, activities going on. Um, Joe, Moto uh, uh, wants people to understand about rent control initiative that's about to get put on the ballot, hopefully. So working on the language, that'll be uh, April 16th. Uh, Ronald Ronald Hess has his, his uh, hand up. Um, go forward, please. But you still hey, are. Uh, there you go. Good. Hi, Yuri. Um, I saw you on Democracy Now. <clears throat> I uh, saw Winter on Fire. I was wondering, were you in Kiev in uh, January 2014? Yes, I was in Kiev uh, in, in that time. Uh, and um, I, I wrote a small book, a brochure. Uh, uh, in in which uh, I argued uh, that uh, we have two archaic political culture for Europe, uh, and uh, um, uh, this uh, uh, way of events uh, may lead to uh, uh, some. Uh, uh, violent political processes which uh, uh, will lead even to more degradation. Uh, I printed uh, this small brochure and uh, 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 which was called My Euromaidan. Uh, and uh, I uh, went uh, there and uh, uh, I handed out this brochure to many people. Uh, recently, I found uh, that uh, in the museum of um, uh, these events, uh, uh, they have my brochure uh, in their collection, uh, uh, but uh, no, nobody listened. Uh, uh, and um, uh, 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 instead of development uh, of uh, uh, nonviolent uh, um, uh, thinking nonviolent values uh, instead of development of democracy and uh, 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 contemporary political approaches. Uh, unfortunately, this populist nationalism, far rightism, and so on prevailed, and um, uh, as well as in Russia. Uh, because because uh, it is ignorance, because it is lack of knowledge, because it is uh, 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 absence of understanding uh, of uh, reality uh, of transformation of society to better without violence. And uh, to, to uh, uh, bring this knowledge to people, uh, to create peace educational programs and so on. We, we need resources. We need uh, uh, at least resources. Uh, uh, with resources may come political will and so on. Hmm. Uh, I, I hear serenus now. Uh, so it is... It is uh, hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Be careful, Yuri, and thank you for for coming out. And and oh my God, um, we <laughs> the closest thing we ever got 
have a good day or night i don't know what what you have we have uh, i was going to have... say i was going to tell everybody this you're when i wrote it down so it's not quite that it's now it's 3 32 a.m tomorrow sunday uh where you're at where we're uh harvey was at is uh 5 uh 32 p.m and as well as simone 5 32 and we're in 8 32 eastern time columbus ohio um any other time zones represented <laughs> yuri's gone thank you yuri. who yuri's gone. yuri yeah 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 i knew he was leaving so i, I just wanted to thank everybody um so any any further conversations we had i mean that shoot uh there's the announcements of yeah, michael duty and um yeah winnie Saint winnie Bird sandy. Has a uh sandy uh 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 um kathy um uh, with the uh, uh simply living they all were posted on chat and and if they want to speak about it now please do but they will all be recorded with suzanne's uh report so thank you and and mary jane as well i mean mary jane had announcements and i see that she's already muted un, unmuted so she's even more technology than all of us go forward <laughs> oh, I just was so muted in case uh, you wanted me to talk about it. I just three things I wanted to point out is my two articles with the pre press ones about homegrown. <laughs> this is, seems so much so mundane compared to talking to somebody who's over in in uh, Ukraine. You know, I, I'm sorry to be so trivial. You know, he's living doing much more important things than I am. But I, and I'll certainly freely acknowledge it. But my my beat, my thing in life is marijuana. So I want to make sure that the weed the weed essentially is ultimately freed as well. Anyway, uh, my two articles. One is about home grow. Uh, why we should have 15 reasons why home grow. The other one is just basically facts and statistics concerning cannabis in Ohio and nationally. And uh, since I think I don't think we'll have a set salon between now and then, I put in the chat. There's going to be a uh, Another round table, another discussion, panel discussion that's going to be sponsored by the Drug, po Drug Education and Policy Center at the Ohio State University Marist College of Law and in, uh, and in cooperation with us at the Natural Therapies Education Foundation that will, uh, first panel we will be about um, the medical program. The medical program in Ohio is expanding. We're going to have the legislator there that is doing all this good work. The second panel will be about, I prefer the term adult use rather than recreational. It's not like, you know, you're throwing around a football, you know, a hemp football, you know, and we're talking about the use of cannabis by adults. So anyway, the adult use panel will have both the Tom Heron, who is the heading up the initiated statutes that's now before the Ohio General Assembly, and also Ron Ferguson, who is a Republican representative who has introduced an adult use bill into uh, into the house. So I just want to make sure you guys know about that. Go to the site, uh, put the link in there, sign up for it. It's going to be really interesting because these are timely things that are going to be happening in April very very soon all right i just want to make sure you guys knew that <laughs> so i could say yeah, let's go back to yuri he's very fascinating I, thank you no yeah no no you thank you that the, the whole gamut of our universe you know uh free press universe uh, our universe you know this columbus community has to in, in, include uh all movements and all uh liberation that we're, we're building a community of liberation right I, I hope we're, we're talking about liberation in all its forms uh, so Sandy and uh, 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 Kathy wanted to say something quickly so but thanks Mary Jane and uh, keep writing and keep uh, doing your doing it's very important very very important and yeah I, I agree it's it's uh, 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 the language is so important. So, oh, there she goes. And, oh, okay. I guess. Okay, I guess. <laughs>
Um, hang on. Hang on. You got about 17 oh people God. watching the same thing. <laughs> no, the reason for that is because I'm in a room with some other people and I, I want to do my little announcement. But also, I want to let you know that we made this kind of a little community affair tonight. Can you see people? Jamie's there. I don't Hi. know. What Jamie, I don't know if we can see you, but <laughs> I don't know if you can see this, but there's a number of people here, somebody in the kitchen. But um, somebody named Kathy. Somebody named Kathy, Kathy McGlone. So we just are doing this together um, today, which was, you know, so you guys brought us all together. And um, so maybe and that's I, a new, I know maybe what, that's um, a new tradition. Maybe that's more about how we're, um, you know, about what, what's going on in Ukraine. Um, but there's also destruction here going on, and that is of our earth. So the announcement I have, and I'll post it again right now, um, or I will after I finish, is about um, the Columbus Community Bill of Rights and CELDEF is hosting a Rights of Nature workshop. Super important. Um, more information is there. You can always contact me. Um, but we'll have this work of nature, Rights of Nature workshop on March 27th. And you can um, look for information or and also register at the link that I'm providing. But um, you know, as always, a, a really great, um, several really great presentations, and it's just kind of nice to do it with other people suddenly these days. <laughs> so I, thanks. I think that was a great idea, and I think we should encourage that development. That that's Amy, like. Can you put it back on? Yeah, you hear it? No, you're good. So, Kathy, do you hear me? Yep, I sure do. Thank you. Wow. Um, yeah, I put several events from Simply Living into the chat. I'll just point out a couple of them. Uh, we have an, our annual membership meeting is March 20th. Uh, we're going to have community awards, um, eco poetry, and Oh gosh, and electing our board members. So if you are a member or would like to be a member, come to that and help us elect our next board. Um, we're also running in April an Earth Month Eco Challenge. So we build a team locally through Simply Living and then we have a friendly competition with other teams around the country um, on this Eco Challenge, which is based around the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And they have five areas and like a dozen actions you can sign up for in each area. And then that results in actual, you know, I guess emissions reductions or reducing plastic use, things like that, but it's measurable. And so the more our team members do, then the more points we get. And, you know, hopefully we'll at least do pretty well um, compared to the other Ohio teams. Um, so we need to, we need to create a, a quiz of what is SDG. Yeah. And then also how many there are, and then maybe list like, six of them you pass a you pass a quiz if you can do six of them so I, because i don't think we we sort of knew the concept of millennial goals and that stuff mm -hmm. and this is sort of the new standard is right. the sustainable development goals sdg right. everybody starts talking about those kind of things um i'm glad to hear columbus you in particular, are, are uh, exploring that that development, so that's great. Um, do we match any? <laughs> does, well, you'll learn more about Does the Columbus that. Action, does the Columbus Environment Action, uh, or whatever they call that, the Climate Action uh, Plan for Columbus, meet any of the SDGs? I haven't compared the cap to the. SDGs, the, the, climate, uh, the climate action plan is more on the local climate level. Action. I'm sure it does, but I haven't actually sat down and looked at the two side yeah, by side. I would, I'm always interested in knowing how, you know, because we start developing our, our, our momentum in, in the community, but are we tying things into international movements and, and global understanding? Yeah, most of the time. And actually, a lot of the times, Columbus's actions are ahead of other things. Columbus is doing really well in terms of its climate action plan. You know, if we meet the goals, there's some ambitious goals in there because we pushed for them to be in there and we got them in there. If this climate action plan, if we meet all those goals, we're going to cut our emissions in half by 2030. That's about 5 million metric tons of carbon emission. Yeah. So 
that certainly would help meet some of the sustainable development goals. So as, as Yosha keeps yelling in my ear at, from the distance, how can we help? How can we help? They, they always want to, how can we help? Like Mary Jane, when you say things. And so write articles, you know, do, how can the community help? I the biggest will. thing, I think the biggest thing for this as what we are, we are a community of people that are very interested in public media, right? And we're very interested in uh, putting truth out. What it was it? No truth. What did he say? It was no truth, do truth, or something like that. Yuri said something that was very. It was dynamic. Um, you you got to do the truth that you know. Um, mm -hmm at that point and, and, and be true about that knowledge. Uh, so go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Kathy. I'm oh, gonna... no, those were the main announcements I had was the yeah. Earth Month Eco Challenge. We do have, I guess, our our first Friday's um, monthly event is April 1st, um, and it's going to be Sheila Davis from Swaco talking about uh, business recycling programs and, and how cust how businesses can cultivate sustainability. That's all. Um, all of those links are in the chat. So, Mike, Mike, Michael Duty said, uh, "Truth, truth unites people," is what he said. Yeah. Uh, was, uh, thanks to all speaking. Yeah. Yeah, Yuri was amazing. I, well, I, I just I'm wanted to share. To I'd met him a few times before, and Simone, Simone's another one that we we just sort of barely touched, and I. I, I apologize enormously about touching that zone there. I, I didn't know. 